Jacob Burton here from StellaCulinary.com, and in this culinary q and I'm going to answer a very common question about braising versus stewing. So Jenny M. from Chicago, Illinois writes, what's the difference between stewing and braising? Is it simply that braises are done in the oven and stews are done on the stovetop? To me, it looks like the exact same technique. Tough meats cook low and slow in liquid until they're falling apart tender. What am I missing? Thanks, Jenny. Well, Jenny, that's a great question, but before we can even get into the difference between braising versus stewing, we first need to understand why we would choose to use these techniques and also where the techniques originated from. So the reason why you would use braising or stewing or really any uh, low and slow cooking method, like slow roasting for that matter, is this thing right here, which I'm drawing, and it is a triple helix of gelatin and when you have three gelatin intertwined in a triple helix like this it is actually called collagen and collagen is a, a connective tissue uh, that works as a structural element within uh, muscles and so the more uh, work a muscle gets in an animal the more collagen or connective tissue you will have so things like, like extremity cuts, like the shoulder, the shank, uh, the ribs, all have a lot of collagen in them. And it says collagen that makes your meat tough and chewy. Now, at around 150 degrees Fahrenheit, at this temperature, when enough time is applied, the collagen will unravel into three individual strands of gelatin. Okay, gelatin. And when this happens, when this unravels into gelatin, then your meat is no longer tough and chewy. It is now succulent and tender, uh, which is why you would want to braise or stew something. So the actual technique of braising originated back before modern stoves, right? So they would use cast iron pots, cast iron. And the thing that this is uh, closest related to uh, nowadays that we find in our kitchen are cast iron Dutch ovens. And the biggest difference would be that these cast iron pots would have heavy, extremely tight fitting lids that were flat. So flat lids. And this is important and we'll see here in a second why that's so important. Now because they didn't have uh, modern stoves like we do in our kitchens today, they cooked over coal. And in fact, the French word for dying coal is very similar to braise, and that is where the term braise was derived from. It was derived from the French word for dying coals. So what would happen is they would take a large piece of meat, and the only condition for this piece of meat was that it was uh, tough, that it came from a portion of the animal that got a lot of work out. Uh, so because of that, it had a lot of connective tissue or collagen. And they would commonly put some vegetables on the bottom of this pot. And because uh, this is a French technique, the vegetables would most likely be mirepoix, right? Mirepoix, which is our uh, carrot, celery, and onions. And then on top of this mirepoix, uh, or aromatic vegetable mixture, they would place a large piece of meat that, again, contained a lot of collagen. Okay, so it was tough. It was chewy. And then where this technique starts to deviate from our modern understanding of braising or a modern application of braising is they would add just a small amount of liquid. Now, this liquid could be water, wine, stock, and usually it was just enough to cover the bottom of the cast iron vessel they were using to braise in. Sometimes they'd add just enough to cover the vegetables that the meat was resting on top of, but they would never actually add enough liquid to where it would be touching the meat. Now once the, everything was in the pot, they would then place another big pile of, of coals right on top of this tight fitting flat lid. Now these coals on top would cause heat to radiate downwards through the cast iron pot so that basically the coals would heat up the cast iron. The cast iron would in turn radiate heat into 
the meat. And this would cause an actual browning reaction through the Maillard reaction. So the radiant heat, radiant heat would then cause the Maillard reaction, which is what causes vegetables and meat to brown and gives you those uh, caramelization flavors and notes. Okay. Now also what happened is, so you have this these coals right here radiating heat downwards on top of the meat, while these coals on the bottom are heating up this liquid, causing it to simmer and then turn into steam. So you have this steam rising within this vessel, but because this lid is tight fitting, the steam can't escape, so it's creating a humid environment. Humid environment. And that humidity is important because these the, the, the cast iron pot would have natural hot spots, and as, as those hot spots start to radiate inwards, the, they are going to cause scorching and uneven cooking. So this humidity within the pot uh, creates a buffer zone uh, that allows the meat to cook a little more gently. And also, as this liquid starts to condense back down, it will baste the meat. And then when you're done with this process, at the bottom of the pot, you have a very flavorful liquid uh, that makes a delicious sauce. Now, some of you may be looking at this and saying, hey, I recognize this technique, but I call it something different. I call it pot roasting. And indeed, our modern take or our modern approach to pot roasting is the exact same thing as classic braising. So what we now today uh, commonly confuse with braising, or what we call braising today, in, in very loose terms, is almost the exact same thing. It's still a moist heat cooking method. We're still a lot of times going to put our aromatics on the bottom of the braising vessel with the meat on the top, mainly because that just helps to keep the meat from scorching. But the main difference is, is now the water is taken up to about two-thirds of the meat. So two-thirds, and this could be wine, stock, water, whatever, just some sort of water-based liquid. And then some chefs will even take it all the way above the meat. And this is just a personal preference. And then what happens is this is placed in an oven, uh, sometimes with a lid, usually with a lid, but not always, lid. And it's cooked in the oven, low and slow, for anywhere for three to eight hours, depending upon the actual cut of meat, what size it is. So larger cuts of meat are going to take a longer uh, time. Uh, short ribs usually take around uh, four hours. And so this is going to uh, use this moist heat to slowly break down the collagen into gelatin strands, yielding a tender piece of meat. Then the meat is taken out. Usually the uh, vegetables are strained and tossed. So just you have the, the liquid remaining. That liquid is reduced into a glaze. The meat is reintroduced and then serve. So this is what we commonly refer to as braising, but technically, this is not braising. This approach is stewing. And it gets confusing because in modern terminology, we refer to as stew as usually a hearty or heavy soup that's served in the wintertime that contains chunks of, of meat that's been cooked nice and low and slow and that are tender. But really, Stewing, in its purest sense, is a technique, and it's a technique uh, applied such as this to where the meat is covered, uh, for the most part, in liquid and cooked low and slow, versus braising is uh, what we call today pot roasting. Now, however, um, this has become such commonplace. Uh, if you cook short ribs like this, I guarantee you they're going to call it braising. I'll call it braising. But it's still nice to know uh, where braising and stewing came from and understanding the lineage and the difference in their applications. If you have your own culinary question, uh, you can get it answered by shooting me an email, jacob at stellaculinary.com, or you can Twitter me at Chef Jacob.